absorbs nutrients with a hidden, <laughs> a hidden extra skull. You don't say. Hello everyone, Thranks is here, and welcome back to No Man's Sky, where we're not going to look at that, actually. I've been, I've been working on it a little bit, and, oh, my goodness, that's, we're going to have to have an entire discussion about what it means to have a base design in mind that uh, does not adhere to a limit that is placed on you by the game that you did not know about when you planned a base. But that is a discussion for another episode because we're taking a break from that yet again. Well, many breaks, many breaks are good uh, because, well, we need to get the weekend mission done. Cutting it close, uh, actually cutting it very, very close down to the very last minute, uh, but we need that Quicksilver in our life. And so, of course, it must be done. It must. All right. Down to the wire here, and it looks like factory override unit 38 minutes. Plenty of time. <laughs> We're not even going to talk to any fellow travelers. We're just going to depart. All right. Which planet has the gateway to take us where we need to go? Don't see it. Uh oh, knowledge stones detected. Is it this planet? No, no, it is not. Boom. Oh, back to acidic tempests. Okay. I suppose we could have traveled to a different system then we might have been tempted to stray and explore. Uh, who am I kidding? We would have been tempted to stray and explore, and that just... It's not a thing you can do with a mere 38 minutes to go. So let's, let's find ourselves a monolith and get to our location. Oh, and push through this acidic tempest, indeed. As was the namesake of the planet. I mean, not the most creative name, but it fits. Okay, I don't really see any knowledge stones, so I think we'll go straight for the Exocraft scan. The Azure Spark will lead us in the right direction. Monolith detected, and yeah, five minutes away. No, that sounds like a job for our spaceship. I'm just calling it the spaceship or my spaceship, our spaceship, because really it uh, it's doesn't have a name yet. And I'm still on the fence with how I want to do it. But I also absolutely do not think. It is important to come up with a name until it is upgraded. So we actually pulse jumped way past the monolith. You know what we're not doing enough of though? With our limited time. Getting our getting our our time in to look at the fire. All right, let's swing in and there we go. Kind of out on this island area.
Oh, kind of a neat looking monolith if I'm if I'm being completely honest. Very cool. Inventory full. To say it isn't so. No, it's it's very so. We've been having a uh, a bit of a, a bit of a time. Um yeah, Gert, it's that's for the next episode to discuss. Instead, we're going to touch these knowledge stones as they shift rapidly between two realities. Like it exists shimmering underwater. The carvings on the stone blur dart in front of my eyes. And unfortunately, it's uh, three less words we're going to learn because we need these to get the Quicksilver. It's definitely worth it, though. It is an investment I would gladly do over and over again. No matter what you're trying to do, you must stop and appreciate the gravity of these moments. You really do. Burn Almighty First Spawn Obedient Toil Geck. Respect First Spawn Belongings. Respect. Barely visible crack down the center of the ancient edifice spits out dust. The monolith shakes. Two vast doors swing open. The interior of the ancient structure is hollow and has been used as a burial chamber. Light the pyre with the mining beam. As it burns, the corpse awakes. It nods to me, howling in pleasure. It leaves me its tribute. And we learn more words from the language of Atlas. Look at those plants. What the heck? Nutrient source is moonlight. Produces hypnotic perfume. Look at that. It's like... Uh, oh, oh, no, 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 just, just go. Those, those inky orbs calling to me as the sun rises and the next acidic tempest is on the horizon. We must travel to the portal, which, wow, is only 13 minutes away by atmosphere. How lovely. And it's already lit up and active? What sorcery is this? I think I still have to put in the coordinates, right? The monumental gateway whispers to me. Yep, we're putting in the gateway. Re recycle yourself here. And away we go. Redacted Moon. How fun. How fun indeed. Look at the lights. I wonder what the nighttime sky is like here. Yeah, lots of... An anomalous planet for an anomaly station. Very cool. So that means the building we'll be heading to, yes, is... is a reality break. Oh, wow. So then, is it gonna be Hexberries? Gosh, part of me does hope it's Hexberries. All right, let's see what the cave marrow. Funny, it's one of those things that's just the same everywhere. Notes anomalous, self-sustaining. Okay, very well. Let's uh, read the 
failure here. The structure's been infected, it's anomalous, calls echoing through the planet itself. The abyss requires resources. Without them, this world will be lost forever. Cable pods. Ooh. So we must... Oh, we must <clears throat> feed it actual anomalies. I'm not certain how I feel about that. That's going to, uh, I would dare say, take a little bit. 16 is a, a slight amount. Um, once we see our first one and we'll be able to typecast it and see what it looks like, and we should be able to spot them from farther away. Oh, we have the creatures here. Absorbs nutrients with a hidden, <laughs> a hidden extra skull. You don't say. That looks like. A cable pod right there with the with the non-standard lighting. What is it? This this teal sort of light. Yep. There's one. Okay. The game is afoot. I like the music here. I like the feel of this planet. For some reason, the gold really works. at how these things are just shifting. Oh no, careful, careful. I don't want any trouble. Alright. So they're actually fairly easy to spot. question merely becomes how frequently will we locate them. I believe I saw one over here in this area. Right, so even if you can't see their color, their shape is fairly the same. Um, let's see, we could... I don't think we can summon... yeah, we can't summon a freighter here. No, no. Take me to the mining beam. There we go. And there's another one over here. So that's what? That's already a quarter of the way complete? Not so bad. Oh my goodness. That... That scene. It's got to get more, more catching more of the sky, like down towards our feet. Okay, well. I'm a little disappointed, though, in the fact that uh, I really want to keep my, <laughs> my cable pods. But it's an easy decision. I mean, all you have to do is go, well, would I rather have 16 cable pods or 1,200 Quicksilver? So, well, yeah, you know, when it when it's put like that, it's actually a very, very, very easy decision. Oh, look. Somebody's base, Voldrang. See a lot of their bases in these weekend missions. Very cool. What is that? Sunset? Oh my goodness. I can't even. Is there a way to put us in that shot? Ugh, what am I doing? No! <laughs> we've already we've already stopped and, and looked into this fire multiple times. We need to get our 
our objective here. Ooh. What is this? Look at these plants here. Unknown nutrient sir source. Complex central nervous system for cave fungus? Man, these planets are just so not removable. Oh, cause these are theirs. No! Oh no! Dang it. Well, we fell for it. That's that's our mistake. Sorry, Voldrang. I don't have time to uh, check out your base. Sad but true. Oh, I must be on my way. So we'll just continue. Ah, look at that. I see two more. Or at the very least, one more. Ooh, the lights. The teal coloring in the lights is more difficult to notice at distance. But, aha, uh -huh, yeah, see, this one was hiding. No, the shape is the biggest giveaway. The teal light is only visible as you get closer, it seems like. Now we don't see the next one to go to. Okay, let's... Oh, wait, nope. I see some over there. Very neat little planet at night with the green nebula. Very much changes the entire feel of the planet. Oh, could this be three of them in sequence? I'm a fan. Oh, I saw another one over there, too. Yeah. Yep, and then I saw one over here. Puts us at 11. Oh, wow. And the progress was made. Gosh, I, I hope... I hope to be able to not only complete this for its deadline, but actually have a little bit of time to talk about what's going on with our base. I suppose we could have a little bit of that discussion now, but, but here we are in this really cool planet and we should give it its we should give it our attention yep there's another one there's our number 14 maybe we'll have a, maybe we will have time to view somebody's base here that could be fun go number 15 plenty of time this one is not so bad at all I like that it's on an anomalous planet I think that's really awesome sometimes those mega exotics can be uh, well, I, I, I like mega, I'll put it this way, I like mega exotic planets most of the time. Uh, my issue with them comes only when uh, they, they get those monochromatic planets, and even those are pretty cool some of the time. Until you get, you know, we had those, it was like two, two in a row, I think maybe even three in a row. We had the monochromatic planets, it was like, oof. And now the last one will elude us.
Bound to be over here somewhere. Look at the lights. I I very much love the lights. It's so mesmerizing. I just want to stop and, and stare at all these neat little lights. And then I'm like, no, pay attention to what you're doing. The final one, the final countdown, if you will. Seven minutes by foot. Uh, no. <laughs> no, 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 none of that. No, 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 no drinks for me. All right, let's go and get over here. Stop it! Oof. I did not mean to to just destroy our item there. I mean, I think it's interesting there's a storm. Storms on anomalous planets are a little different. That's not a thing I see normally. And the storm is what? A slight drop in temperature? A little bit of dust? Our hazard... Uh... Our hazard shielding really isn't dropping at all. How interesting. It's like, oh no, look out, it's a storm! It's minus 10 Celsius! Oh, look out, it's so cold! Alright, we will heal this structure. I do my duty. The corruption fades. I hear its voice. I feel its feelings. Feel malice, hatred, despair, all of it directed only against its own self. I see memories of water. Yay! Very good. Alright, now we're just a quick hop and a skip and a jump. Back to our portal. Where is ah ha 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 ha? The storm is clearing. The horrible minus minus ten ten below zero. It was a it was a hateful blizzard. Uh, I'll take a cable pod for the road. Shoot, um, maybe I'll take a couple. Hold on. Okay, no, maybe I'll just take the one. That's fair. Let's do it. Ah. Look at that. So much time to spare. And look at that. That green nebula on this acidic planet is pretty... pretty ominous. Pretty ominous. I do like how that looks. I think we will head back over to the Cerulean Terraces and just kind of take a look at our base and or lack thereof and talk a little bit about what is happening because um, I'm sure for anyone that's been watching the series I'm sure people are like what the heck are you even doing and really it uh, it all stems from I don't even want to throw rocks at the game, but I kind of have to to take the heat off of me in that it's it's not me. It's not me. I had a vision. The vision was grand. I was prepared to spend as much time as necessary to get it done. Um, lots of planning, lots of foresight. I can't even can't even begin to convey. And then, of course, obviously not enough planning. 
because one of the simplest things, such as a limitation, um, was not being observed. And there's our Quicksilver. And our factory over override unit. Sure thing. Let's send that to the freighter. Gek Relic? Uh, no thank you. Are we going to spend the Quicksilver? No, I don't think we will. Not at this time. Okay, well, with all this extra time that we have here, let's go ahead and go back to the base and talk a little bit about where we're at and what's going to happen. Perhaps part of what I've been falling into, the trap, as it was, is that I wanted to keep most of the work I had done. Now, maybe that's because I wanted my time to be uh, relevant. Perhaps it's because I thought I had a really good idea. And it was just as simple as I wanted everybody to see it. But here's, here's what happens is once you start trying to change the design, Lots of things continue to change. Alright, we're just going to pick up all of this here. This, this area is pretty much done. Um, but once you start to change it, the change becomes a significant part of it. Okay, as you can see, we've already expanded the highway to three. But the change also inevitably takes away from it. Uh, there's actually quite a lot that I don't like about it simply because of how we've had to change it. So part of what's getting me is this profile. I mean, come on. it's Now, this isn't finished. This isn't finished by any means. Um, but, but again, the profile is square. <laughs> Let's just be honest. It's square. And while that would change a little bit up top, uh, not enough. Not enough. It's also not as large as I thought. It feels more like a box instead of a grand monum uh, monument, which is what I was going for. And then you've also got this, uh, this underside here. You see, this underside is also not what I had originally had in mind. Compromises. Compromises on all fronts. And I just... I don't... I don't know how to handle it. I don't know how to accept these terms. In fact, I want to reject them. And I want to reject them so bad that I think what we're going to do is we're just going to, gosh, scrap it, right? Like, we're just going to start just tearing it down. And of course, I'm not going to do it all right now, but effectively what we're trying to do, I mean, let me stop mincing words. Um, is we're trying to, I believe the, I believe the phrase is, and, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, we're trying to cram, um, approximately, um, ten, um, ten cubic kilograms of excrement into a container that can only hold about five cubic kilograms. So, so basically, the more we, we change the design, the less the design is true to what it originally was and becomes sort of a a not not pleasant hybridization and uh, and loses all of its uh, appeal so aside from trying to keep it to say well i came up with this design and i want to make it work it doesn't even look the same as it was originally planned it's it's you know and how many times do you compromise on your creation on something that you're spending all this time going you know it is is 10% of a compromise acceptable? We all compromise. We all give to get what we want, right? Dr. Morden Solis? I mean, but but how much? Is 50% compromise appropriate? This is our, our masterpiece. Is 30% even okay? What if, what if this was starting to compromise so much that by the end of it I wouldn't recognize it? What if it just becomes a slapdash 
cram the cram the excrement into the container and make it fit sort of situation instead of rethinking everything not not rethinking how do we make how do we how do we cram uh, all this you know 10 10 cubic kilograms how do how do we fit it in the container no but just how do we just get rid of it i feel fairly certain i feel fairly certain there will be a time maybe not in this game but at some point where we'll be able to use this design and i've already saved it in all its dimensions and everything i, I have i have the all the planning that i did that that work isn't gone and it's a great design but what what it what it needs to do is it needs to happen on a game that's going to facilitate that level of construction that level of grandeur and as much as I want to believe that this is that game, it's not. It's really not. Um, because of the limitations inherent. The Atlas is dying. I mean, let's be clear. The Atlas is dying. And that what that means is that there is no conceivable way that it can continue to render as much as we're expecting from it. It's not going to happen. Have I have I done enough of this on camera yet for everyone to get the point? No. So what instead I'm going to do is we're going to just start from scratch, right? Like to completely start over. To come up with a design that utilizes this space in an in an appropriate way. And and I got a I got a spoiler alert for you. It doesn't use any of this. Like we're not we're not going to we're not going to do this. This is not no. This is not a thing. At least not in this this incarnation. We're we're not losing our resources. I I'm so I'm so over it. I had thought at one point about just straight deleting the base computer. <laughs> <laughs> and just salvaging half the pieces. But no, there are some aspects I would like to keep. I would like to keep... So the thing that I was sure about... The thing that I was sure about prior to anything... Is the span. So let's, 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 stop, let's stop throwing rocks at our old design. And let's start talking about what's going to stay and what works. The span is a thing. I like having this bridge between these two areas. We have a very nice, clean, identified uh, area here to gather milk. And we have a geomagnetic power supply area on the other side and even a spawning area over there for which we could gather milk, really, if we wanted to. We could easily have more than one. <laughs> the truth of the matter is... That's it. Am I going to keep these teleporters, these exocraft stations? I don't think so. The lights, the, the nothing. To nothing. And that's okay. As as we've said in the past, knowing knowing when to fold them is actually a very important part of this process. There is only so much you can do and plan for, and even then you'll never get it right. The base limit is probably something you could argue I should have been aware of. I should have taken it into account in my planning. But we're not there yet. That's time travel, and the truth of the matter is, I didn't know. I had never pushed myself to build to this magnitude in the game before, and so with that, it doesn't matter if I should have, could have, would have, I did not. And so what we must now deal with is the reality of that. And that reality will no longer feature the trying to force this design. We're going to stop trying to make fetch happen. 
Like, it's over. The dream is dead. But from from the slumber of the Atlas will be a new dream born. And I think at this point, I can safely say we've we've talked about it enough. So that's where we are. That's where everybody can understand what's happening. Um, it definitely is a lot easier to tear all this down than it was to put it up. <laughs> but the good news is I've already started work on the next design. I think the next design is going to be very, very good. Um, and that's sort of what has given me the confidence to tear all this down and to not look back, is that I know what I want to do now. I have, I'm working within my limitations. I have a vision. And this one will make sense. It will be it will be good and it will make sense and that's just really all there is to it. So with that I'm gonna go ahead and I know it's a bit short of an episode, but I have to continue tearing all this down and we just we can't do the we can't do another twenty minutes of this. So I'm going to go ahead and say that in the next episode, we'll get some honest-to-goodness work done with the new design. But until then, take care.